This video continues our series on whether it's preferable to buy or lease a new car. I've copied some information over from the last video, namely here's the cash flow diagram that we use if we're going to buy the new car and we're going to take out a loan. We have to pay off monthly payments on the loan. This is a no money down loan, but remember that the first monthly payment is due right at the beginning of the first month. And then at the end of 48 months, because of the term of this loan is 48 months, at the end of the loan we have a car that we own. It's worth something to us in the used car market. We could sell it if we want. We could trade it. And we can do whatever we want with it. So we have to understand what this car is worth in net present terms. We're going to take this worth. We're going to discount that to net present value or to present value. We're going to take this term, the series of loan payments, we're going to discount that to present value, and we're going to compute in present value terms what the total cost of this cash flow diagram looks like. Recall from the last video that the net present value of the loan option is the discounted uh, value of the future payment, whatever F is, whatever the value of the car is at the end of four years. And then here's the monthly payment. And, and that's multiplied by the present worth factor. This is less than, um, I'm sorry, this is a ratio that we saw in the last video that takes this series and expresses it in a single value at time equals zero. But you might ask yourself, how do we get A, the monthly payments? And we looked at that in the last video too. A equals the price of the car plus the transaction cost. The taxes have to be all paid up front. And then here, take the reciprocal of the present worth factor. But instead of using a discount rate, as we mentioned in the last video, we have to use the interest rate on the loan. And we've had other videos that discuss the difference between these two, R, the discount rate, and I, the interest rate. So we have a good understanding now of what the buy option is. Let's take a look at the lease option. The cash flow diagram for leasing is a little bit different than for buying. The principal advantage of the lease is that it reduces your monthly payments. So we're still going to go out for 48 years. We have some monthly payment that we'll call L. Again, it's a kind of a no money down uh, loan. But the taxes are a little bit different. Instead of the taxes being amortized in the monthly payment, Taxes when you buy have to be paid all up front, so the bank will pay those for you and they'll amortize the expense of those taxes by folding them into your monthly payment using this formula right here. Well here, we'll call this little t, the taxes here, they get paid on each monthly payment. So the taxes aren't charged until the monthly payment is charged. And that's advantageous, unless you live in a no tax uh, state, I suppose. Now this could be sales tax, excise tax, use tax. Um, but the key is that you have lower monthly payments compared to the monthly payments here and there are some tax advantages to leasing in that instead of paying the taxes all at once and then um, financing those taxes when you're paying interest on them, you only pay the, the taxes are already spread out. You only pay the taxes as the cost of the lease is incurred. So here's our final lease payment at 47 months, our final tax payment right here. And then we mentioned in the last video that there could be a disposition fee. Now I've drawn this arrow as if it was really long. Probably the disposition fee is more than the lease payment. It might even be more than the lease payment and the taxes. So if your lease payment is on the order of $250, the disposition might be $300. It might be a little bit more. Uh, if you're leasing a very expensive car, perhaps the disposition fee is less. In any case, the disposition fee funds the cost of recovering the car. The leasing company owns the car for the entire four-year period and at the end of the four years they want to auction it off. There's some costs associated with that and they want you to pay these costs. This is called the disposition fee. You can avoid the disposition fee if you purchase the car from the leasing company at the end of the lease period and we're going to look at that option in another video. For now what we want to do so we can compare on a net present basis the buying option to the leasing option is understand how we compute a net present value for the leasing cash flow diagram. Well here we have L and we have T. 
Those are our monthly costs. And we can use the exact same present worth factor to discount all of the monthly payments and express them at time equals zero. So it's the exact same discount rate and the exact same formula. You know that L and T, now keep in mind um, that I put this as value, but of course these should be negative values because you pay these. So this is why I drew the arrows going down because these are amounts that you have to pay. So uh, the leasing option has a negative net present value, and that's because this is not an asset. This is a car that you need for other purposes. It doesn't generate revenue. So you know that A is greater. The main advantage of leasing is that these monthly payments are lower. So A, your monthly payment with the loan, is greater than L and T. And if A is larger, keeping in mind that these are both negative, you can compare just these two terms, since the present work factors are identical, A is greater than the sum of L and T, you know that this term is more negative than this term. That makes leasing look like a good option. But keep in mind that leasing accumulates, I'm sorry, that uh, buying the car accumulates equity in the car. So the question here is whether this future value makes up for the difference between these two values. And we haven't even looked at the disposition fee. So I suppose we need to also subtract the disposition fee, which we're going to call D, 1 plus R to the N. Now we have a net present value basis for comparing whether purchasing the car with a loan or purchasing the car with a lease is less expensive. And it depends largely on this F. Well, there's a couple of hitches. The disposition fee, we know, is only charged if we don't purchase the car. So the next question, or the question that we're going to look at in the next video, is what happens here at 48 months when you decide whether you're going to purchase the car or not? This may be key in determination of whether the lease is more advantageous to you than the loan.